we're live. Woo! Exciting. <laughs> no, I've probably sent it to the wrong group. <laughs> well, we're live. Hello, everyone. Front row seats and all. Oh, there we are. Yes. Excellent. Oh, I'll send you. For those Hi, of you coming in, like you can see names. I've got a whole lot of Facebook users, so I can't see. Hi, Lorraine. <laughs> Hi, We've Sam. got lots of people saying Hi, hello. Hi, Mel. Ah, Belinda, it's Mel who makes all the charms for the books. Ah. Oh. Hello from That's South Africa. Thing. That could be anybody. I've got lots of Facebook users coming up on my end. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Can you see why this isn't? Can you guys hear me, but you can't hear Belinda? Anybody. I've got lots of Facebook users coming up. What are you trying head. to do? All right, that's good. You can hear me? Yep, got it. Hi, Trish. Hi, Liz. Yes, Carrie, we've dressed especially for the occasion. Hi, Diana. <laughs> Samantha. Right, guys, um, just to let you know that in the background, um, we can read all of your uh, lovely comments, but we don't know who they actually belong to. Um, so unless you give live stream permission to show us your names, um, it, we might not necessarily know uh, who's who's speaking. So just with that aside, uh, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, welcome to Paper Scissors Story this evening, um, but particularly welcome to the wonderful Belinda, who, uh, as you know, um, has designed the beautiful Lady Vagabond um, papers for Stamperia that we're going to be using in our next project, which is the Vagabond briefcase. Um, and we are so excited to have you here tonight, Belinda. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's such fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing the suitcase with you. Can't you hear me? Why can't I hear you? Oh no, that's so frustrating. <laughs> Such fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing the suitcase with you. Oh, well, it'll be good. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's so frustrating. I know, it's right. I think I'm lagging behind somewhere. But I'm gonna I'm I'm going to take the suitcase. It'll be good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm having a conversation with myself here. Oh we can laugh. Technology was never my thing. Oh my goodness me. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Belinda, I am going to <laughs> pass everything over to you <laughs> and i'm really hoping that you guys are gonna write some questions for us so that uh belinda can answer them i am going to you're gonna have right, to belinda, i'm gonna hand over to you second device okay i've got the screen yay Okay, so I should be able to hear Kel, but I don't think she can hear me. So we have a slight technical glitch. Welcome to technology. Um, yes, I. so I joined this group because I saw that amazing briefcase and I... I'm so looking forward to actually doing the class. Um, I really love what I'm seeing everybody doing online with Lady Vagabond. It is just so exciting. So, okay. So, are there a new design on its way from Marlene? Um, there is something in the works, 
but mine won't be coming out now with the next release. It'll be coming out at the end of the year, same as Lady Vagabond did. So I've still got some time to do a whole lot of work. So yes, there is another line coming out. What was my inspiration for the Vagabond papers? A lot of it was, um, so it was a joint thing. Stamperia gave me very specific things to to work with so I had to have a character I had to have a place that she and it had to be a girl because we had Antoinette doing the guy um we had to choose a city so he already had New York so I chose London then um I had to have a map so I chose a, a particular style of map that I liked um, somewhere that she had to live, so the city. Um, then we had to have, of course, a um, mode of transport. And so those were the basic things. But the other things that I put in were personal things to me. So, for example, this book is actually a real book. This is the original. Um, and it is was my granny's photo album. And you can see, if you look inside, let's get to that page. If I can get the light to not be too bright. Why is it so bright? There we go. That's a bit better. So these actually feature in the paper line as well. And they come from, they come from this book. So they are original to this very meaningful book that was my granny's. And the cat, the cat has two names. His real name is Marmalade. And um, so his, his social media name is The Supervisor. And that happened because he was, wherever I was trying to take photographs of things, he was always nosing around and or sleeping in the background. So um, that started a couple of years ago before I was even doing um, Stamperia where he was always in the background of, of photographs and things. So he became nicknamed by the people online as the supervisor. So, yes, he's, he goes by both names. Um, so he has a stage name, <laughs> which is hysterical. Um, and... Um, what has been the most memorable projects for you that people have made with Lady Vagabond? Um, oh, wow. There have just been so many. I'm just blown away. I really am blown away by the ingenuity that people have. I think the first time I started seeing the, the molded wings pop up on Antoni's owl, um, I thought that was just genius. Um and of course, giving Lady Vagabond wings and um, using the molds in, in different ways. The, the incredible paper albums that are out there. I, I, I love making um, mini albums for myself, which is why I actually put this in, in the paper line. Um, because I could imagine myself using something like that for books. And so just seeing the different ways that people are so ingenuitive with the paper line has been mind blowing. Uh, the cards, the pop-up cards, the mixed media pieces, it's endless. It's, it's every single day I am saying to my mom, cause my mom's also on Facebook, have you seen this? Did you see that? And then she'll say to me, have you seen this project or that project? The, the hot air balloons, the, um, the combination when people use Sir Vagabond with Lady Vagabond in different ways. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, I, I can't say that there's any one that sticks out because they all, they all have their own merits. So, um, I, I, I'm just blown away. Will the next theme include steampunk again? Well, I am kind of mostly a steampunk girl. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it will include steampunk. Um, and much like this one, it will be not too steampunk, I hope. Um, I mean, steampunk enough to be steampunk, but not uh, not over-the-top steampunk. So it'll have – and that's, I think, what I've enjoyed seeing is 
because this has been um, more of a travel uh, a, a travel line, um, it it isn't necessarily just steampunk, and I think that's that's what I'm aiming for with my next one as well. Um, do I have a pre favorite project to do? I don't honestly. I I hop from thing to thing. So I enjoy doing mixed media. I enjoy doing um, scrapbooking, and it's I'm from South Africa, so. In South Africa, we do a lot of double pages, which is one of the reasons why when I designed the line, I had some papers that you could put next to each other and they actually match each other. So um, when you're looking at the paper, this page here with the suitcases follows on with the girl sitting on the kist. And... Um, so I designed that intentionally so that it was one continuous page for those who like to do a double page, whether you do mixed media with it or whether you do it as a scrapbooking page. Um, I also like to art journal. So I have some examples here. So this was one that I did fairly recently. I need to zoom back. Um, and I think I have another one here. There, I did this one live recently um, where I combined the papers. Um, and so I took Sarah Alcabender's line and um, mixed it in with Lady Vagabond. I quite enjoy that as a challenge. In fact, um, when Stamperia did their marathon day, I did this piece together with the calligraphy line. And um, so I like to mix and match. And that's something that is so amazing about Stamperia's lines is that the colors all work so well together. And um, somebody was asking, where did my steampunk love start? Well, I must blame Tim Holtz. <laughs> it's always good to have someone to blame, isn't it? <laughs> Um, and so he was the one who alerted me to steampunk because he did a tag with gears and things and he called it steampunk and I was like that really spoke to me and I was like what on earth is steampunk so I went down that rabbit hole and I investigated steampunk and I fell in love and um, so yes it's all Tim's fault um, and he knows this <laughs> I have been lucky enough to meet him in person a few times because um, we had an amazing lady called Glenda in South Africa who used to invite him to um, come and do workshops there. And he loves South Africa. So until his health became an issue and he stopped traveling, we were very lucky to have him there. Um, so somebody, Karen, is asking, oh, I need to scroll up. Just ah. Thank you. Uh, my question is, what do you find best to use in the molds? I tried resin, not the Stamperia brand yet, and some of my molds had tiny holes in. What a mess. They're soft clay. I find very soft and brittle to use on mixed media. What am I doing wrong? Or what can I do better, please? Okay. So, um, ah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm taking up most of the screen. Thanks, Carl. Um, I use resin in my molds, and yes, they do sometimes have holes. Unfortunately, that is the way that the molds are made. It, they are a thin piece of plastic which is stretched over the mold, and so sometimes with the heat of the resin, because um, different resins get to different temperatures, they can make a thin patch uh, melt and leak through. So what I have actually done is I have taken some hot glue from the other side, and I I have put some hot glue um, in in those holes so it is possible to do that uh, the clear resin the stamperia clear resin doesn't get to the same temperatures as um, some of the the quick set resins so they shouldn't make holes in but they take of course a lot longer to set um, there are the other thing that works really nicely in the molds is the uh, it's sitting over there. What is it called? It's a powder. Uh, ceramic powder. 
so ceramic powder works really well in the molds. Um, there are other brands of clay. The soft clay I have used in the molds, um, but I am impatient. So I personally prefer resin. Um, so that, yes, that is the thing. I know that um, Antoinette's molds, Antoinette's came out with three uh, silicone molds. And the silicone molds, of course, don't leak, but you cannot get the same depth with the silicone mold. So it's a catch-22 of the design. So like his airship is particularly deep and it wouldn't work in one of those silicone molds because they're just too shallow. So, um, yeah, I, I work when I do pour my resin, I always make sure that I work on a nonstick craft sheet so that if they do leak through, it's not the end of the world. Um, and sometimes what I do do is just if it has leaked through, I just leave that piece in there. Um, it is one of the first things I said to Stamperia when I joined them. I said, these molds drive me mad. It's like a love-hate relationship. But unfortunately, it's just um, it's the process um, of, of how it's made. So that is unfortunate. But not, not all molds have the holes. It's just um, luck of the draw. Um, Plaster of Paris, yes. So the... Um, the ceramic powder is very similar to Plaster of Paris. What did I study? I saw there was a question. Did I study art, craft, design at school uni, or does it all come naturally? Well, I've been creative for since forever. I was an only child, and my mom gave me a lot of DIY things to keep me busy. Um, but I've always loved drawing, coloring, making things. Uh, as far back as I can remember, I, I've had that interest. Um, I did study graphic design. So that is, that is, um, a, but before computers. So I am one of those computers were around, but it, you had to be, I don't know, mega rich to be able to have an Apple Mac because Apple Macs were the only graphics computers that were available at the time. And, um, so when I studied, I think in my third year, computers came in and there were 10 between, I don't know how many hundred of us in the, in the, in the year. And so we would have, and our, we worked in a three week cycle. And once in a three week cycle, we would have a day with four of us to one computer to try and learn computers. Needless to say, I stuck to doing everything by hand and I still do. So my drawings that I do for Stamperia are actual paper drawings that I scan and send in. Um, so yes, it's it's something that's always been a part of me. I knew somebody asked me when I was growing up what you want to be, and I said something in the art world. I didn't know what. At one stage, I wanted to be an architect. Then I discovered, oh my soul, seven years study and all that maths. No, no, not for me. <laughs> So that put me off. Then I wanted to be an interior decorator because, or interior designer, they call it. And again, um, there was still not enough creativity for me there. And then I discovered graphic design. And that has covered everything that I love. I um, am darkroom trained. I love photography. So um, that was really awesome to, to have that in my arsenal of tools. And yes, to 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 study graphics, uh, covered so many different options. I, my second major was printmaking. So I, um, I, I have a lot of, uh, technical capabilities and understandings when it comes to, to designing things. Um, I don't know who's late cause it comes up as Facebook user, but no problem. Welcome. Um, so yes, I'm very, very lucky. And I, I worked as a graphic designer for a company for a couple of years, and then I actually started my own art studio teaching fine art. Because ultimately, I had wanted to be a fine artist, and my mother said to me, there's no money in fine art unless you become one of these greats. You know, you have to find something that is different, which is really difficult in this day and age. And um, so, yes, you know, they say you'll always come full circle if you can. And um, so I started my own studio 22 years ago now. And I taught art to adults for 20 years. Um, so what is my favorite art at the moment? Um, somebody wasn't late for a change. I don't know who that was. <laughs> um, 
what is my favorite art at the moment? Ah, that is so difficult to say because it is, uh, I don't really have favorites. I, I'm interested in so much and I try and learn so much. Um, one of the nice things about having taken art um, to matric in, in high school is that um, having studied fine art history, um, oh, you, you learn all about the grand masters and so on. And it's just, it's just amazing. I think living in Europe now is um, something that, well, of course, we now have COVID, but um, one of the things I was looking forward to when I moved from South Africa to Berlin two years ago was being able to travel and see more of the art world. And I was lucky enough to go to Amsterdam and see the Van Gogh Museum and various other museums with Banksy and amazing, amazing art. So to actually see it in person was was incredible. Um what art technique would you like to learn next? Um, I don't know. I, if I see something, I will try and learn it. Um, I can't say there's anything particular at the moment that I am desperate to learn. Um, did I make my hat myself? Yes. I did. This one actually featured on, I'm going to take it off so you can see it better. It featured on Hochanda, which is now the craft, the craft studio, the craft shop, something like that. Hochanda has changed its name. Um, so yes, I did this as a sample. Um, and you can actually see that the light bulb is from the clear resin, which I have painted. Um, <clears throat> and I've used the books. So, um, yes, and in fact, it's quite heavy. <laughs> the resin on it is quite heavy, so I'm going to take that off. Um, who is this who, who attended some of my classes? It's so frustrating not being able to see names. Um, so thank you, whoever it was who was attending my classes. Um, yes, I did used to... Um, I used to teach art in my studio during the week and on weekends I guest taught at um, various scrapbook studios around Cape Town um, and I did have the opportunity to go up to Johannesburg as well. Johannesburg is the other capital city of South Africa and um, I taught Tim's 12 Tags of Christmas up there. Um, what do I tend to do if you find yourself in an artistic block. Ah, it was Linda. Hello, Linda. Um, I clean my studio because <laughs> I always find stuff that I forgot that I had and I find that very inspiring. Um, the other thing I do is I will sit and do swatches of things. Um, I have got a tag set of swatches. Um, I think it's behind me somewhere um, that I do. Um, so I, I do also Pinterest. Pinterest is an amazing place. Um, I make the effort to pin stuff frequently to various boards. And when I'm stuck, I will cruise Pinterest and invariably something that I've put there, whether it's in my cards folder, whether it's in my steampunk folder, something will spark something off and I'll think, oh, I've got a dye like that or I've got paper like that. Um, well, I love that technique. It's something I've been meaning to try and I will go off and um, investigate that. Um, Karen's saying, I'm loving all the new collectible books. Will this be a feature in all new collections? Saves a lot of papers when fussy cut. <laughs> Yes, I'm not into fussy cutting. So any of you who have watched um, a lot of my lives will know that fussy cutting is not my favorite thing to do. Um, my husband did buy me a brother a printer, cutter, scanner, so that I don't have to cut too many things. Um, but yes, it, it definitely does help because, um, in fact, I've got here two little um, versions to show you guys so I wanted to show you this is the original 
Then we've got the paper from the 12 by 12, and then we've got the 8 by 8. Um, and I have made them into little journal books. This was also one, and I've used the um, the insights that come from my granny's book um, in this one. And, um, oh, other side. There we go. Um, and then this one was one that I did in a, in a live stream. And I haven't actually put any um, photos or anything in there, but I combined the Lady Vagabond with the calligraphy line for this little book. Um, so I don't know. Um, I'm still very much in the designing process. Um, do go and have a look and find me on Pinterest. I am there as Belinda Bassan. Um, yes, Pinterest is a bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, it's one I do enjoy going down. Um, and um, what am I looking at? Um, how long does a design process from drawing my designs to product release? So that varies. So I was very much a late uh a late entry last year because Antonis was already busy with his line when um, I joined. I only joined Stamperia in May last year and um, we did a teacher's training uh, thing which was supposed to normally we all go to Hungary and um, do a big event there and of course it all had to move online and um, it was Antonis who saw some of my projects. In fact, I've done my latest egg. Um, I had just done one using his egg, or oh, well, his um, line, sea roll. Um, and um, he saw one like this that I had done with his, and he was like, have you ever thought of doing your own paper? And I was like, no, why would I do that? I'm too happy using yours. And the very next day, Stamperia contacted me and said, well, actually, We'd like you to do the lady version. He's busy with the gentleman traveler, and we'd like you to do the lady traveler. So uh, that was June, and it came out in September. So it was crazy behind the scenes, um, drawing and coming up with all the ideas. So that was particularly fast, which is unusual. Um, I know in most companies it's at least um, a year before your designs actually hit the shelves so that was a bit of a breakneck speed um one but um so back over there um so this time round um and Tunis is coming out with another release now in june july for the summer and mine will be coming out in september october again so um i have started working on it and um so yes my line will be coming out then so it takes it takes it's a bit like having a child about nine months <laughs> that's probably the best answer <laughs> um okay good morning from new zealand oh wow um am i planning another kind of lady vagabond um well Let's just say that it will work really well with Lady Vagabond. Let's leave it at that. Uh, Karen, again, do you think Stamperia will ever do dyes and paper pads with more pages? So Stamperia does have a 22-page um, album sometimes. Uh, it depends. I know that Voyages Fantastiques had one, and there was an artist one a couple of years ago that also had 22 pages. So it depends. Um, that is something that that they that they do every now and again. Whether they will have dyes to go with it, I'm not sure. I have seen that they have got some dyes. So they have an alphabet dye. They have some birds, and they have a flourish, um, and some like nameplate things. So they do have dyes, but. Um, whether that is something that they are thinking of doing for the future, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not so sure. No, um, <laughs> it's definitely not painful. Whoever said that? Um, Samantha's asking. It can't have been that bad. Would have stopped at one. 
know, I know. Yeah, I think um, the pain is a selective memory, childbirth. Hello from Washington. Like everyone else, a love lady vagabond, you're very talented. Oh, thank you. Um, it's so nice. We've got so many people from all over the world. And I think that's what's been so amazing with this pandemic is we've all gone online and we've made, I've made amazing friends from around the world. Um, and I don't think I would have met them if it wasn't for this pandemic. So as much as we are hating this pandemic in the craft world, it really has brought us all together. Is there a rehab somewhere for Stamperia addicts? Mm, I haven't found one because I think... <laughs> When I found the local shop that sold Stamperia, I think I bought one of everything. <laughs> I was like, ah, heaven. I'm sorry. There's no such thing. It's just called buy more and use it. Just don't, you know, um, we have a, a standing joke with a few of us that you need three pieces of paper at least. One to use one side, one to use the other side, and then the third one to keep and stroke. Um, so... My paper collection is amazing and there's so much detail. Anne from Scotland. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, I bought two of everything. I'm laughing at the comment. I must admit that because I like to do double page um, spreads in South Africa, it taught me to buy two, if not three of something, because quite often you would want two for the background and then you need the third one for the other side to cut out and whatever. So who was the handsome gentleman that I met in Budapest when I went, Saudi? That was quite possibly um, Giovanni. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but it was uh, Sadie. I sent her on a wild goose chase to get some um, to, to get some bits from for me. She was in Budapest and I said, oh, oh I know where you can go. And I didn't realise it was the offices that I sent her to. And Sadie will <laughs> tell you the rest of the story, but he was absolutely amazing. He popped her into um, a taxi and sent her off to um, the <laughs> local shop to go and get what she wanted. Absolutely. Oh, wow. We've all been so jealous of her since as well, because he's, <laughs> he's quite a handsome young man, isn't he? <laughs> he is rather. Yes. These Italians are very gorgeous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes that will have been giovanni um yes we could hear you so that worked really well oh that's good um, I'll up again now um i love your collection and more than that the way you are always so kind with everybody i notice you have a nice word for everybody in every project oh thank you um i must admit uh i I feel like if somebody's going to make the effort to buy Lady Vagabond and make a project that um, I really want to do my bit and say thank you. I mean, it's 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 just my way, little way of giving of giving back. Um, and for me, it really is exciting every time I see a project, whether it's just a card. I say just a card. I mean, some people's cards they, they pop up and jump out and do all sorts of things or whether it's a, a simple card um i i really appreciate it and um i love to see what people do and yes i feel the the least i can do is pop a little note and and say something about it um that's i think that's who i was before i was lady vagabond um, I think I'm forever going to be Lady Vagabond, even if I do, I don't know, fairy or something. Um, I'll forever be Lady Vagabond. <laughs> and I think before I became Lady Vagabond, that's who I was. If I saw something I loved, I would comment on it. And just because I am now Lady Vagabond um, doesn't mean I'm going to change who I am. So I like to think that I'm still me, um, carrying on being me. And... Um, I just now every day have something exciting to look forward to when I wake up and I go onto social media. There's always something to see that somebody has made and posted. So for me, for me, it's very exciting. I mean, it's six months down the line and it's still exciting. Um, and um, <laughs> somebody bought, instead of buying three papers, she bought six. Uh where is your favorite place to create? And do you like to listen to music, watch television while creating? Lots of love from Florida. Um, 
I create here in my studio, I have got a tiny little space um, that I have pinched off the lounge. Um, so the Calyx units you can see behind me um, have been just the best buy ever. They swallow a lot of stuff because I've got two studios worth of um, tools, paint, equipment, um, crafting stuff uh, that I brought with me from South Africa because my husband's company paid for our move. And I literally filled that container to the last centimeter <laughs> down to my last box of brads, <laughs> which escaped into the bottom of the box <laughs> when I was unpacking. That was interesting. Um, so um, I do create here in, in my studio. I've got beautiful light. My husband has put up an amazing light for me. Um, and yeah, this is my little hidey hole and this is where I enjoy to create. So what you're seeing behind me is um, my storage. Um, I can't, somewhere on Facebook, I have posted pictures of my actual studio and I think it might even be on my Pinterest board as well. Um, so it is a tiny little two and a half meter by four meter space and everything is crammed in here. Um, so yes, I do, I do, I can literally touch both sides of my studio. <laughs> Steampunk goblins and fairies. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, but um, I love looking at fairies, but, and I, yeah, I, I do enjoy the fantasy side of things, but I don't know if fairies will feature. Uh, um, I think there was another question I saw earlier on um oh and from glasgow yes and Anne marie mcdonald has actually clicked the little link so this is a new thing i know that kel hasn't used before so she's never used Streamyard in in her groups before and so that she can see and and her guests can see what your name is you need to before you come in just click the little blue thing above and give Streamyard permission to use your name so then we can actually see who is who is Don't worry, coming. they're all used to me to being totally inept with technology. It's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> we'll train you still. We'll train you still. It's great. I'm going to start using this. I love it. It's great. It really is great because it, it allows you to be more interactive and instead of being like one-sided all the time. Yeah, I like um, that. Were there any other questions that you had? I think you said you had some other questions for me. We um, did. There was one we missed earlier the, at the very beginning, um, and I'm not sure who asked it, but the question was, what? I did jot it down, but the trouble is I can't read my writing now. Um, but it, I think <laughs> it was, what, what is your single greatest inspiration in general? Um, oh, here it is. What, what was my inspiration for the Vagabond Papers? No, I answered that. Um, oh, yeah. What is your single greatest artistic inspiration in general? Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I must admit, I am inspired by uh, technique-orientated things. I am inspired by... Um, by things like, uh, for example, let me just grab this. Um, something like this. Um, so I will see something about town where something is rusted and looks grungy and I want to see, can I recreate something like that? So I will fiddle around with pastes and paints and products and so on um and try and learn how to layer and um grunge and so on so that is that is something that um i do enjoy doing um and and i do it's something that tim always says but it's something that i've always done naturally is i play the what if game so i i will pick up a product and i will have learned as much as I can about the product, um, for example, crackle paste. And then I'll think, okay, but uh, what if I I wanted to add color to it? What will happen? Will it still work? What if I did this? What if I used it on that? What if I used it under this? Um, so a lot of the knowledge that I have comes from me just experimenting. 
I love to experiment. I love to try things. And um, in fact, um, recently there was a lady who, um, I'm trying to think what her, her, her name is online, Art, uh, she might even be in this chat, Art Agnes, uh, Art Anyway, she did, she did a crackle technique where she used two types of crackle together. So she used the country crackle, which is what I call a sandwich crackle, where you normally put down a paint layer, you put this clear country crackle down, then you put your paint layer on top and it cracks. But then she took it one step further and she put the single crack stuff on top of that and it, it, it sort of exploded and really looked like peeled paint. It looked the most realistic to um, what you see out there on old doors and buildings and things recreated with our paint products. Um, I'm just sorry, I can't think of her of her name at the moment. Art Angel? But, um, Art Angel. I think it could be her, yes. Yes, Agnieszka. And um, yes, so she did a, a tutorial and I was most grateful because although she used completely different colors, I then have taken that and used my colors and made it do what I wanted to do. So I'm constantly, um, yes, looking and trying different things and fascinated by products and what they do together. So, and learning from others. I'm always learning from others. I love watching videos of um, all the different creatives. So um, Tim, Finnepe, Diane Reevely, uh, Dina Wakely, you name it, um, pe lots of other people out there. I love to see how they use products. And um, as I said, make it my own, take it, take it and, and make it work for me. Um, because I like the darker grunge rust. I always think it's very funny. And my mom used to think it very odd that I'd buy something brand new and it'd be really nice as it is. And then I'd make it look a hundred years old. <laughs> She'd be like, what was wrong with it as it was? <laughs> um, do I use the natural world as inspiration? I use a lot of, um, I do walk around the city, I'm very grateful to live in, in Berlin. It's an amazing city with incredible architecture, um, a lot of history and a lot of vintage buildings. I'm very into vintage. Um, and so not so much the natural world as in plants and that kind of natural, but um, my surroundings. I'm very inspired by my surroundings. Like three of the doors um, that I put in the Lady Vagabond uh, line are actually doors that are, the middle one is right across the road from me and two come from Kudam. So although she's from London, <laughs> I snuck some Berlin doors in there. Um, so um, I, I do use what is around me. I'm very much inspired by what is around me and I'm very lucky to have um, a vintage market close by. Well, when they're allowed to run during COVID. Um, and um, so I love going to the vintage market and um, buying things to draw. So the goggles that were on the supervisor, for example, um, I bought those at the vintage market. Um, I like to own what I draw if I can, um, if it's not too, if it's not too dear, um, things can be a little bit expensive, but um, Yes, I draw a lot of my inspiration by the uh, from the things that are are around me. Uh, if I could give a newbie one tip, what would it be? Uh, hmm. Just keep trying. Just don't give up. Because I think as a newbie, one feels overwhelmed um, by everything that's out there. And um, sometimes one just has to start somewhere and try. And um, one learns more from doing and failing than from doing and making everything perfect. Um, because when it's, it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, when, when something goes wrong, and this is something that I've done with my students um, when we did fine art, when I taught fine art, um, when something wasn't going as planned, 
we would have to really look at the project and reassess and um, possibly take it in a different direction um, if they had dropped a brush and we couldn't get um, the paint off if it if she person had left it for too long they hadn't noticed for example and we couldn't get it off without um, making a mark or damaging it we would have to look at how we could add something to the project um, to to fix it and nine times out of ten when you are pushed to do that you actually land up improving the project it lands up better than it would have been had you not had that accident so um, it forces one to think out of the box and um, so yes I think I think just don't give up um, and also something that I say to everybody whether you're an art student or a mixed media person scrapbook or whatever um, remember to be nice to yourself because most of us start crafting as adults, um, often when we retire. Um, and so the last time you did anything creative was when you were at school. And quite often when you were at junior school, so you were really little. And so if you think now you in your 60s and you wanting to go back to art, but the little artist inside you is still at junior school age, you know, they're eight, nine or 10. And would you be mean and nasty to a child? No. So why are you mean and nasty to yourself when you struggle to do things? And as kids, kids expect to make mistakes. Kids expect to not get everything perfect first time. They're still learning. So I don't understand why as creatives, um, we expect everything we do to be a masterpiece um, worthy of, I say, Instagram. You know, not everything is Instagram worthy. And um, I do think that a lot of people uh, look at work that, for example, I put out or um, my design team puts out and they think, oh, I can't do that. I'll never do that. I've been doing this for 30 years. I have been creative for 30 years. It's what I do. I bet if you put me in your day job, if you just dropped me into your day job, it would take me months before I would be vaguely competent at doing something. Um, somebody's off to bed, night all. Um, so yes, you've got to start somewhere and you've got to just keep at it. And um, slowly but surely you'll find what works for you, what you like, what you don't like. Um, watch YouTube, do classes like Kel's. Um, they, Kel is an amazing um teacher with all these free videos for you uh, to follow. Um, so start by following step by step things and slowly but surely you will find what works for you. Um, yes, somebody's saying don't do too many <laughs> crafts at once. Practice, copy and share and enjoy what you do. Yes, very important. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. So number, number one, that canvas that you just showed us with the amazing rust what are you going to do yes. because it? it's amazing i actually have no idea again it was something um i was following agnieszka's technique um you can see some of the it's phenomenal stuff it's down just... at the bottom here um yeah. and then i was just playing around and adding to it and i have no idea it was fun to do You'll notice it hasn't been on Facebook or Instagram either because I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> Love it. Did you make your necklace? Yes, I did. I thought you might have. So these are done oh, with my... Let me get um, rid of that thing so people can see. Sorry, my bad. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's my stencil of the, uh, of the flying goggles and it's my stamps of Lady Vagabond and uh, the airship and then Stamperia's metal bits and some old keys that I've collected. These are done on shrinky, um, shrinky dink, shrinky bits. Um, so, yes, I did make it myself. Um, yes, it usually, it quite often stands behind here, but I've put up some of my samples so that you guys can see them in the background so that it's not just blank white boxes. Um, Oh, I can hear my cats having a moment. Cats always have moments. That's what they're there for. 
Can you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> I think he wants to go outside. What's the matter? Come. Come say hello. He probably won't know. Um, okay, so, yes, Cal and Mark have got you through the last year. And to be honest, I mean, that is what us as creatives, there's a whole lot of us out there who have been, um, yes, making the effort to um, put videos out there to keep people going um, and doing live streams on weekends and during the week. And I know it is something that um, people look forward to and it means a lot to a lot of people. So, yeah. Um, Strobes really have pretty much got marked through the last year, I would say. <laughs> Big Strobes. Big what other questions have you got for me? Well, you answered so many of them already because um, we had, how did you get involved in Stamperia in the first place? Well, you beautifully answered that one for us. Um, where do you draw your inspiration? Well, you answered that several times, which is great. Um, and then you, you did kind of touch on on um, another, which was about how you actually, um, you know, draw your designs. Is it digital? How much is hand drawn? That sort of thing you process with that. Um, okay, so I draw everything by hand and scan it in and send it off to Stamperia where the genies behind computers do the technical stuff. <laughs> and that's the other thing. I mean, the um, the molds and everything are taken. It still blows my mind. I mean, that's not something that I understand. And I work with 3D printers. I have a 3D printer. Um, but the I look at the molds that they have made from my drawings, and it's incredible. Um, that blows me away. I still don't know. I need to know how they do that. Um, uh, how would I record my – okay, so how would I record my um, memories for future generations? I have – I actually need to count them. I have my son's entire life recorded in scrapbook. Um, so from – I started scrapbooking. My son is now 16 and a half. Um, I started scrapbooking two years before that, so it's almost 19 years that I've been scrapbooking. Um, I'm a photographer, so as I mentioned earlier, so I've oodles and oodles and oodles of photographs. When computer, When digital cameras first came out, my husband was like, yeah, this is the way to go because I was spending a fortune on printing and processing all my films every week. Um, so I have, I took to scrapbooking to, as a way, especially when things became digital, because I realized that um, if we didn't actually print our photographs and put them somewhere, that um, they would just kind of disappear on computers, on CDs, get lost. And um, it's not even like you have the negatives hanging around that you can reprint if you want to. Um, so I made a point of printing photographs and actually scrapbooking them. I do have a box of photographs and I still need to scrapbook. But the joy is as kids grow older, they do fewer firsts. <laughs> <So> <laughs> not quite as prolific um but yes i do i do actually scrapbook um and um somebody uh somebody appreciates my words and finds herself repeating them yes <laughs> i repeat tim and people repeat me and it's wonderful it's like what brings me crafty joy from ellie um I think when I have a crazy idea in my head and I can actually get it to work um, because I have lots of crazy ideas um, that don't all work. So, for example, I, I get a lot of satisfaction from playing the what if game and um, doing the technique. So this one that I keep holding up, um, I, I get a lot of satisfaction from just getting this far. It doesn't always have to be a great big finished project like the hat, for example. Um, I get a lot of satisfaction from getting the result that I want from something like this. Um, so um, I, I think a lot of designing comes instinctively to to me because of all my training and my years of doing it, my years of studying and um, one of the things about being an art teacher is people would come in with a challenge. Um, 
So they would come in and they would say, uh, with, I don't know, it could be anything from a well-known mask, excuse me, a well-known, uh, I shouldn't drink fizzy cool drink on air. Um, well-known masters, it could be a well-known masters masterpiece um, or it could be a photograph that they'd taken and they'd want to paint it and I would have to work out how. So I like a challenge. I really enjoy a challenge and it brings me great joy when I have achieved that challenge. Um, so yes, and I am a bit of a, a, a box ticker um i quite i have a long list of things to do and things to achieve so um i really I get a lot of satisfaction from crossing it off my list um somebody scrapbooks because of photographs am i am i doing any online classes so yes i do um i have had shops invite me to do online classes um for them specifically i am doing one for a mixed media swedish um group where i should have been going there at the end of april to teach in person but it's moved online um i am looking at doing online classes myself uh, possibly with kids but um you know, being new to a country and not speaking the language well enough, because I am learning German, but um, not learning as fast as I would like. Um, dealing with post offices and rules and things like that is sometimes a little daunting. So I haven't gone too far down that ro road, but doing online classes where the shops can do the kits and things like that, um, that, that, has, that is something that I have done. Um, somebody was Glenda was lucky enough to inherit loads of very old photos and have enjoyed recording the info I received with them. Yes, that is very special. Um, because yeah, I think my son's going to be very selective about the <laughs> books that he chooses to keep. <laughs> I kind of think that one day somebody's going to have a huge bonfire. Um, but um. Oh, it's a pleasure, Glenda. I'm so glad you find it inspiring. Um, I have been inspired by so many people over the years, and I think this is my way of giving back. Um, I really, I really do appreciate all the information that people have so generously given of themselves, and I have had the pleasure of um, the benefit of it. So I do, I do like to do the same. Um, if I could meet one of the old masters, who would it be? Michelangelo, without a doubt. Oh my word, that man was a genius. Um, da Vinci as well. Um, for, yeah, I'd be greedy and ask for two. <laughs> Add Van Gogh in there too. Um, yeah, that, yeah, uh, I have been very lucky to be able to go and see some of these pieces in person. Um, I, having studied art till the end of high school, when my husband and I did a backpacking trip for six weeks, um, my husband made the mistake of leaving me to do the planning. I did ask him if there was something he wanted to do, like um, go to any of the Formula One tracks or, you know, some guy stuff. And he was like, no, 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 you plan. I don't think he quite realized <laughs> what I had in mind because we went from uh, Paris to Rome to Venice, um, basically following all the Michelangelo things I could find, um, every art gallery, um, and he was very patient and um, he actually enjoyed it. He's quite creative himself, but although he's a, an um, IT engineer. Um, so, yes, to, to stand in front of the master's work like the David, um, it, it, it gives you goosebumps when you've had to study it and draw it for exams and write essays on these things to to stand there. Even um, Picasso. Oh, yes, we went to the Picasso Museum. Um, and to, to see their process, to see what they did at a time where everything was so new and um, challenging and to break new ground, uh, they, yeah, um, 
they could be shunned. Whereas now, I mean, for heaven's sake, you can tape a banana to the wall and it could be sold for a fortune. So <laughs> art has come. I don't know whether it's come a long way in a good way sometimes. Um, so somebody found an old photo in my aunt's stuff. It was one of my ancestors in the suffragette movement. Wow. Um, Lorraine would have been Da Vinci. Yes, I had the pleasure of standing in front of, of um, his Mona Lisa. Um, and also in South Africa, they had the exhibition of all his um, creations. And I have a, a thing for his Vitruvian man. Um, <laughs> same old Van Gogh, just because of that Doctor Who episode. Yes, uh, having gone to um, Amsterdam and gone to his museum, um, just to see his brush strokes uh, come, it, it's it's incredible. Um, it is it is very in, inspiring. Um, so, what other questions have we got? Have I missed? No, you've answered every single one I had. I had about half a dozen, and you you managed to to do that. So, thank you so much. I'm just so appreciative of you spending time with us this evening. Um, oh, it's, it's just been such a great introduction, um, you know, to uh, guys will we'll start class next week, um, which is what I said, because I, I knew this would be too good. To... <laughs> I kind of feel well, like I'm standing in your limelight. I mean, this is no, your gorgeous right. class and here I am chatting away. <laughs> No, it's just made it so incredibly special, um, and and I, I know how much excitement there's been, um, you know, uh, certainly behind the scenes, and, and and everybody's just been so grateful that we've had the opportunity to to chat with you tonight. So thank you so so much for spending time with us. You've got no idea how much it means to us. We're so appreciative. No, it's a pleasure. It really is a pleasure, and um, I just want to say thank you to people like you who've taken lady vagabond and done incredible things with it um and thank you to everybody that puts their work out there because i know how hard it is for some people um when you've made something to take that leap of faith and put it out on the internet for everybody's perusal it's not always the easiest thing to do um it's quite a scary thing so thank you thank you for doing that and taking that leap of faith um and um, I, I, for one, really, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I've been really looking forward to it. I mean, you can tell I've decorated my whole studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any oh, other projects that you want to see? Because I've got a few more projects here. Oh, I've got one that's coming up next week. Oh, give us a yes, I'll get rid of me and let you have it all then. That's cool. Hold on. <laughs> your, your, your training the other day did not go in vain. That's See, fine. That and then you can take the, the question off. Oh, yeah. And we can have more screen. Um, oh. oh, that's ooh. Well, we've done a lot of talking since then. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I know right. you've got to scroll back oh, and find it to unclick <laughs> it. <laughs> Um, okay, so I have actually put the video of this up on my YouTube, um, but on Wednesday next week, so on the 14th, I will be doing a uh, live on Stamperia using their pouring medium um, on the lab. And um, so this is the project that I created where um, I've actually combined the pouring medium together with um, on these uh, Christmas balls. Um, together with the mirror, um, the mirror mist, um, there's the pouring medium on that one, on the outside. Um, and then if you open, you slide this one, uh, I've got to do it backwards because, of course, <laughs> and there is wow. this one inside. So, um, yeah, so I will be discussing how i achieve that um next week i think you'll find wendy's definitely front front row for that one <laughs> <laughs> uh what else do we have oh this is the other piece from hachanda i like putting lights in things my first word as baby was light 
and I'm still addicted to light. And I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to put the light on uh, in the background. Oh, where's the switch? There. Wow. Can you see that? Oh, yes. There's, um, the, uh, the gear pops up in the background behind the rice paper. So wow. um, that is one of the works that I did for Hachanda as well. Um, so when you switch it off, you have the – there's a light shadow of the gear there, but you have the um, the rice paper in the back. As um, you were designing, did you have like projects in mind? You know, as as you you know designed an image, you thought, oh, I can do this with it and that with it, and absolutely. And that's something. Oh yes, I did bring them in here. Okay, so when I was designing, for example, the buildings. So the buildings um, are actually a row of Victorian houses in. England, in the UK, in London, um, and I designed them specifically to fit the back of the books. Wow. So um, it was it was one of those things because um, when I said to Aziza, the owner of Stamperia, um, I've designed these houses and I've designed them to fit these books, and she was like, oh, um, but we might not always have stock of the books. I was like, that doesn't matter. As long as I can make my dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, so sometimes like this, specifically, I did actually have that in mind. Um, so these are the cutest little books um, that I've put Lady Vagabond on and then I've painted just plain inside and put the, the buildings on the back. Um, so each one is a... This one's just plain um, with the pink house. Then we've got the door on the front of this one with the yellow house. Um, then we've got Lady Vagabond in some crackle uh, with the other yellow house. And um, using some of the hinges um, with the red house. So I have a fascination with those... Um, Oh, Flip, what are they called? You know those, those book nooks? Oh, um, yeah, in between your books and your bookcase. With, I want to have a go at making one of those. Oh, do a class. I'll, I'll do <laughs> Definitely. So that is, that is something that I'm fascinated with, and that's what got me um, kind of thinking about this idea. Like um, what if we had to have like a whole little city on the back of the houses instead of doing the book nook? So that's, that's what gave me, gave me that idea. Um, what other projects? Um, I've got quite a, because I, I have a thing about books. I like books. You might have noticed I like books. That's a good thing. I'm quite partial myself. Um, and so this is a really big, this is a wooden book that I bought at the local market, um, cra uh, craft shop. Um, wow. Storage book. It's really big. I mean, this is an A4 you know, these are that's an A4 design. So I mean this book is really huge. Um so and I like combining and Twinnies papers. And Twinnies papers have a lot of backgrounds um that are really wonderful for Lady Vagabond to zoom around on. Um and I don't know if you saw me um on the live on Monday on Stamperia um using I've shown how I've used the clear die cuts um on this project um right. so that was quite fun and then just for fun another book somebody's just I have a whole you store everything i have um some shelves on the back of these calyx units um that i've yeah that and, and the books store inside other things. So when I start running out of space, I start using the books for storage. <laughs> Brilliant. And they just start making projects that fit in in boxes. Um, and then one last book. Uh, this one. Using the rice papers and so on and the molds. Wow. So, um, yeah. I think that's all I've got in here. Oh, and this one. But I did this one as a live. This is a mini album that I did as a live um, 
with uh, Omar. Uh, I did it together with Shamila. So Shamila was making, and then the books. So when I designed the books, I wanted the books to be double-sided so that you could use them for pop-ups like this. Actually, that's something that really impresses me with these papers is that when you do cut things out, they, they're they printed so well that they really are back to back. There's no sort of bleed or anything. It's pretty impressive. I must admit, I thought that when I was cutting them out myself. It is. It is. I know as a graphic designer, um, as a printing company, um, most of them would run away. So I don't know who they use, but they are brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah, because that that would be a nightmare to get to get right. But it's it's as an end user, it's such a fabulous thing, especially now with those long skinny books. Um, I'm designing some things to go in those long skinny books that you can use both sides um, for this next line, and it's just so exciting. It's like a whole new. <gasps> what if I made this? What if I made that? <laughs> I like that. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So. Um, this is just one of the ready-made, I call it cheats. Um, oh, yeah, they're brilliant. We've used quite a few of those, got some um, in the shop, and they are absolutely excellent. Yeah. So, to worry about making a book, you can just concentrate on being creative. On decorating it and actually having some yeah. fun, yeah. Because um, most of my mini albums, yours will be the first one that I am making without a re – not without a reason, that sounds funny, but I normally um, have – photographs i start with my photographs and i print out all my photographs because for me that affects what flips flaps flops pockets waterfalls or whatever i put on a page depending on how many photographs i have yeah so i will be making your one for the first time ever just making a blank album because it's nice oh wow oh gosh thank you got no goose pimply and fangirl <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Celine here. I adore all your books as well as your creations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ruth is grinning like a lunatic. <laughs> that, 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 that. I know this for a fact. And so is Wendy. I've seen Wendy um, also commenting, Wendy Booth. Oh, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so a book inside a book. So it's like Russian eggs. Because um, these, so the, small one fits inside that one and then the medium one fits inside the big one so yes i can i can stack my books and make a bit more space on the shelf the more projects i have i also um have the advantage of sending them off to some of my samples of just um the local shop uh Mick Lieber, who started this all because that's where i found stamperia um so yeah i i do um send a whole lot of things off there for her to have on 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 display so it does save some safe space on my shelf until they come back again but then i send the next batch off <laughs> it's like rotational rotational display so no more questions well, I think we've we've bothered you now for an hour and a quarter, which is pretty impressive. Going, I think I think you definitely deserve a drink. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I think I might put in an order for a gin and tonic. Good idea. We are looking forward to the day when you can travel again. Um, oh, there's an open invitation. We can we can we can sort you out of class. Um, so do come and visit. Um, oh, and that, that would be, be fabulous. Be, uh in 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 class for the briefcase as well that will be fantastic but thank you so much for spending time with us this evening we're so so grateful to have had you here and you. uh yeah look forward to uh to seeing what you make definitely yes. looking forward to the new collection can't wait for that there might be a book <laughs> there might, there might be, be a book now. yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your time, Belinda. We're so grateful pleasure. to you. Absolute right. pleasure. And thanks for everybody for joining in, for all the questions. It's been great. It's my first question and answer session. That was fun. It was. It, well, it was fun for me. Definitely loved uh, listening in at the background.
<laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're grateful to all of you uh, as well for your company. And um, we'll see you all um, next Wednesday uh, for the start of the class. But in the meantime, I'm sure if you do have any more questions that you want to put to Belinda, but um, if you put them, um, you know, maybe on the end of this uh, this live, then I'm, I'm sure we can yeah. sort out some answers for you. Because I know there was a few people who couldn't make it as the live, but might still have questions yeah. for you. All right, thank you so much, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.